Just bringing the chain up, we're only in about, what, seven, eight metres? Five. Oh, it's only five metres. Now it's very clear here, and you can see the chain running out this way on the bed. But what you can also see is as we've moved around with the uh, tide and with the wind, the chain has just made tracks in the sand. So I'm going to bring it up and we should actually be able to see the chain and hopefully the anchor. Good morning. Got a touch of the old um, throat. So I'm not going to be doing much talking to camera today. Not much to report, but going around tip again to find some internet to do stuff and that is all I'm going to say to camera today. Oh poor Jamie, hurty throaty, hurty throaty. I get no sympathy from her. <laughs> what are we going to talk about today other than your throat? <laughs> okay so to, in today's episode we uh, are going to a new anchorage, one that we've never been before, so I thought it might just be worth discussing how we approach scoping out anchorages. We're on the northeast coast of Kudat. We left this morning, um, so around the top and we're about here. Kudat itself is here, this is the area of Kudat. Um, so that, that there's no sort of huge great bays or anything, but the conditions are fairly calm and we've got a little bit of a headland poking out giving us a little bit of shelter and there's also a reef directly in front of us as well so that's stopping any larger swell that might come through so at the moment all is good we're certainly going to stay here for one day maybe longer well, it's just nice there's nobody here there's no there's no village, sadly. It's not very. There's not. I don't think there's anywhere we can visit. But it's just uh, very peaceful and a lovely day. It's day two in this very quiet little anchorage. The throat's getting worse, so I won't chat for long. But uh, one of the reasons why we chose this place is because, although it's exposed to the north and the east, it should be protected from the south. Well, we're about to find out because. This has been brewing, I've been watching it on the weather radar for the last few hours actually. It's been developing way over at sea. And of course this is normal. This is a southerly, south easterly, southwesterly. Um, and we're going to find out just how protected we are with 100 metres over there of reef. 100 metres over there is reef in 4 metres of water. So let's see if we do get any protection at all. So how do we decide where to anchor? Well, it does seem common sense most of the time, but you do need to use a little bit of uh, thought beforehand. Quite a lot to think about. Okay, so first of all, we'll just look at sources of information on known anchorages. The first area to look at are uh, published data, specifically in pilot books, uh, magazine articles and rally handbooks as well. Quite often mm. rallies will produce handbooks uh, showing you where all of those anchorages are. So very good sources of information there and quite often, especially with pilot books, they can be quite detailed about how to actually get into complex anchorages. Yeah. Next up we have annotated peer sources. Uh, think about Navionics for example, uh, we all use Navionics on our phone, or most of us do, and this allows you to actually annotate the charts with your own anchorages, so you can put in the depth and your own notes uh, on your experiences on those anchorages. There's uh, Garmin has Active Captain as well, which uh, you can use, and then of course there's online sources, and one in particular is No Foreign Land. Uh, this is a really good resource. Obviously with all of these you have to be online to get the updates on the anchorages, but No Foreign Land is a great resource for peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, recommendations. It includes everything actually, photographs, wow. recommended restaurants. Yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, those are some good peer-to-peer -peer sources. Can I just jump in here and say one thing? On all of those peer-to-peer -peer resources, use it as a starting block not as the main reason, you know, not as your main piece of information because some peers are better than other peers. Mm. <laughs> An 
another great way to get uh, anchoring information is around the bar from other yachties online in forums all those kinds of things but to talk to people who've actually been and done done it especially people you know well and trust great way of picking up a few anchorages we, we've had it in the past people just send us a whole load of positions been there here here and here and here try those they all they all they all work for us so yeah we do that for them and our friends do it for us of course it's not just yachties who have that local knowledge uh, fishermen especially around here mm. Uh, if you watch to see where the fishermen congregate when you know there's a storm coming and you get to an anchorage Brilliant. and there's 20 fishing boats there, you know that's a pretty safe anchorage. We've done that quite a few times, haven't mm. we? We really have. The next source of information are downloads, uh, specifically GPX waypoints. There's a whole load of websites out there dedicated to downloads which allow you to uh, upload all of this information into your chart plotter or your phone. And don't forget the basics. We all have charts on board, mostly electronic, but we also have paper charts. Using a combination of charts and what you can actually see is probably the best place to start, if I'm honest. Look at what's going on on the bottom. Is it weed, sand, mud, what, what rock? What, are you likely to be able to anchor there at all? Is there protection from land? What's going on with the prevailing winds and the tides? The weather is the next consideration. Uh, get to know uh, set winds, you may have seasonal winds uh, and also of course if there's any uh, squalls coming as well. So as Liz says, look at the, uh, the contours of the land, any promontories and if they're going to offer you that kind of protection from uh, weather that might be about to happen. And remember, it's not the wind that will dislodge your anchor, it's more likely to be the swell or waves. You can end up in an uncomfortable anchorage if you're not careful. You know what else is uncomfortable? Big corporations trying to take money off you. Here's one of them. <laughs> and finally, in terms of data sources, there is, of course, satellite imagery. I think most of us are familiar with apps like Ovitool or our preferred one, which is all-in-one offline maps for Android. And don't forget, there are more than a couple of sources of satellite data. So, you've, of course, you've got Google, but you also have Esri, which is what Microsoft's Bing uses. And those two can be quite different. But satellite imagery, especially when it comes to reefed areas, mm. can be really, really precise way of scoping out anchorages. We've got a whole video on this particular subject, and I'll link to that in the description. <laughs> One final thing which we didn't mention is to look at your charts and make sure you're actually allowed to anchor uh, where you're planning to anchor. Uh, we have anchored inadvertently in a couple of marine parks in the past and we've been kicked out, including one time at gunpoint. Yes, yeah, in Eritrea, that was a bit scary. Once you have all this data, it's time to scope out the anchorage. So, providing the conditions allow you to, take a slow trip in and if you can move around the whole anchorage just to really scope it out that means looking for rocks coral coral bombers uh, the position of uh, land around you just to get a feel and also of course the seabed as well sure. just to keep an eye on what you're actually going to be anchoring on have a contingency or two up your sleeve. If it suddenly blows up, there's a whiteout, or it's the middle of the night and you need to move fast, you need to be able to get out of where you are to safety. So we always leave our track and we're able to follow, and we have done in the past, follow our track out to safety. Yeah, and also the other part of having contingency is to know where you're gonna to go to next. So don't just scope out that one anchorage that you're staying in. Get to know other potential anchorages around you. And if you don't have that option, you can always just go out to sea. So we've left quiet, no-name bay anchorage. Lovely couple of days there. Even with a storm coming through, it was really nice little anchorage. I think we'll go back there when we head back round, wherever that might, might be. On our way to Kudat now, where we can do a little bit of shopping. We'll anchor outside the police jetty. And we'll anchor off just so it's a bit quieter. But it has been a lovely, quiet two days while Jamie has been recovering from a nasty sore throat and a cold, which was a bit of a worry, to be honest. We did te test the temperature the whole time, because you never know what it is. I think it's just a straightforward sore throat. So, uh, all is good now. 